This episode, we're gonna talk about how you can get data from an API inside of your Next.js application. Now, the important thing to remember is that certain functions inside of Next.js are not sent to the client. So you can do anything you want in those server functions, such as connecting to an API, using secret keys, connecting to a database with a connection string, or anything that you would need to keep private. And since this is going to be running on a server, you can create your own API inside of Next.js. And they even give you an API example inside of the API folder. So here is that example, hello.ts, and we have it returning name is John Doe. Now I encourage you to use whatever API you want or however you want to store your data. I'm considering looking at storing it directly in a database in the upcoming episodes. However, for this episode, I'm going to be teaching you how inside of Get Static Props we can invoke an API take that data according to some type and pass it to the page and have that page be static so that the actual customer data can be in the HTML. So the way we're gonna do this is to make a request to an existing API that we built earlier on in this series. If you don't have this API, you can watch the previous videos, take the source code, or just continue to use your hard-coded data from the previous episode. So you can get the repo at React back in Django in my GitHub, so feel free to clone this or fork it for yourself. So at this point, we have a virtual environment, we've applied our migrations, and we've activated our virtual environment and ran our server. All steps you can learn how to do in earlier videos for a Django backend. Once the server started, this is where the API is available. So let's go ahead and make a request in our front end inside of get static props. So we will use Axios and say axios.get. Now this will need downloaded and imported. So from the terminal, we will say npm install Axios. And then we will import this. So import Axios from Axios. So far so good. Now it expects one to two arguments. Let's go ahead and define all of those. The first thing will be the URL. So we'll say HTTP colon slash slash localhost 8000. And then the path on here is slash API slash customers. And now from what we've done earlier on in the series, we would put a dot then. However, being inside of an async function, what we can do is we can say await and assign the result of this to a variable const result and now what we can do is console log result so what this will do is it will wait for the response assign it to result and then console log it do a quick refresh just to get a clean slate connection refused oh that doesn't look good so not really sure what this problem is about but doing some research on it people were saying that they could fix this using their local ip so this is the loopback IP address, which will work the same way as localhost. So what we'll do is we will replace localhost here with 127.0.0.1 colon 8000. And you can access the Django application the same exact way. So when you visit this, you're going to get the Django application saying authentication credentials were not provided. Now we're not going to worry about authentication for this video. So what we'll do is we'll just remove the authentication requirements on the back end. However, this is a really good opportunity to show you what happens when the network request fails from our Next.js application. So if we take a look at our site now, we do a refresh, you know, nothing's really happening. And the interesting thing is, although we do get some stuff in the console, if we take a look at the network, we are not seeing that network request in here at all. So we can't really easily see what's the problem. You're not gonna see that network request in the network tab because it's actually being made from the back end. If you remember, this get static props is executed on our server and we have a little server running. So this is executed before we get a returned HTML page. So where do you find the actual problem and all the details? Inside of the server terminal. So the same terminal that showed that the application was running is going to show any issues. Same thing with this console log result. It's not going to show up in the front end in this console. It's going to show up here. So let's go ahead and move over to our back end code and quickly remove the authentication requirement. Inside of here, I'm just going to remove this line and this line. And now we should be able to access our API. So if you see the page now, you should get some data. And as for our front end, we're no longer getting that 500 from the front end, and we're just getting the hard-coded data that we had earlier. 
we are getting a console warning, but that's just related to how I was mapping through the data. So in this side, we should be able to see the customer data here and it's two objects. Let's go fix that front end problem. We should be able to say key is customer.id and that should fix the problem. And now what we can do is we can take this customer data and assign it to this customers inside of this props. If we just remove this and say result.data and then jump into that customer's property, this should work. So we can see on our page, we are getting data and this actually has construction now rather than tech, which is what I think it was before. So this data is coming from the database and you can see if we console log that information here. So result.data.customers, that'll actually give us a little better view of the data. So that's not too bad. However, you might be interested in typing this with TypeScript. So that's where things get a little more painful. Overall, it's not gonna be too bad though. If you take a look at what this response is, it has a data property, which is an object containing a customer's property. So you can type this here and say that it's an object containing an array of customers. So you could define this as a type up here, such as get customer response. And this is going to contain one property, customers, which is going to be a customer array. Then you can pass this inside of angle brackets to the get by saying get customer response. And everything will work the same way, but now you get the TypeScript benefits. So we will know that result has dot data and data has dot customers. So there you go. But there is a good chance you'll probably never use this again. So what you can do is you can actually define this inline. So if you take this object and cut it and paste it here, you can do that as well. So we'll paste that object in there and remove this type definition, save, it'll reformat, and we are in the exact same spot. What I want to do now is take a closer look at this behavior if you were to build your application for production. You can experiment with this by closing out of your server and issuing npm run build. This will go through the compilation process and it will give you a key explaining the different things that happen to your pages. For now I'm just interested in saying npm run start which will start our built application and our server is now available on localhost 3000. So it's going to be the same site. However, the difference now is that changes are not going to be automatically seen. So for example, if I put test in here and saved it, well, it's not going to refresh our server. It's always going to feed those same files. So that's the difference between npm run dev and npm run build followed by npm run start. So let's go ahead and just change that back so I don't forget. But what I wanted to show you now is that we have this data and if we view the source, right clicking on the page, view page source, we should still have that hard coded in here, which is fabulous. So the static compiling worked. Now the problem you see is that these values are the only values that are going to show up on this page. So if we went to our API and let's say we created a new customer, I'll just copy this one as an example. We're not going to need the ID and this guy's name was Smith John. And let's say they were in the teaching industry and we post this data. The data should now be available on the main page. So when we go to customers, we now have three pieces of data, each one a customer. However, when we visit the customers page on localhost and do a refresh, uh oh, nothing has changed. So you can see the problem with static site generation is that it causes the site to go outdated because the data is not updated when the database changes. So this isn't the end of the world. So chill out. There's various ways of fixing this and we'll be talking about that throughout these episodes.